Thank you so much for watching Landom Sea Goes There. Please subscribe and hit the like button and the bell notification button. Long before you saw Tom Cruise dangling from the sides of airplanes, Mission Impossible, the TV show, was known for thrills, suspense, and ripping off rubber faces. The TV series premiered in 1966, which was a grand year for TV. And it was definitely a good time to be a kid in front of the tube. That unmistakable theme music sent chills down your spine. It made anyone want to sneak across a rooftop at night. Lalo Schifrin's music was a vital part of Mission Impossible's not-so-impossible missions. It also had a stellar cast to go along with it that really elevated this show to cinematic quality. You saw Martin Landau and his wife, Barbara Bain, headline the show, and later, after Star Trek wrapped, Leonard Nimoy jumped aboard as well. And of course, there was Peter Graves, Greg Morris, Peter Lupus, Sam Elliott, and more. The original concept of the show had a totally different name. The original pitch for it centered around six former military specialists led by Lieutenant Colonel David Briggs of the U.S. Special Services. His crew would discreetly commit criminal acts for a common good. To make that idea a little tamer for 1960s television, the producers came up with the more outwardly heroic Mission Impossible Force. The entire thought process of it was inspired by a 1964 heist movie. Peter Ustinov took home an Oscar for his work in Top Copy, a dazzling heist film that set the mold for modern capers. A motley crew of crooks, including a mute acrobat dubbed the Human Fly, teams up to steal a dagger from a Turkish palace. The exotic location and the premise inspired Bruce Geller, who was a producer on Rawhide at the time, to craft his own Cloak and Dagger series. Dan Briggs and Jim Phelps listened to every self-destructing tape with one exception. Mission Impossible leader Dan Briggs would listen to the iconic self-destruct messages throughout the first season. Peter Graves took over the lead role in season two, and he would then receive the mission briefings. In just one instance did another character receive the top secret tape. In episode 23, entitled Action, Cinnamon Carter, played by Barbara Bain, listens to the recorded message. Now, when Dan Briggs was played by Stephen Hill during the first season, they ran into some problems. He was an Orthodox Jew, and he had to leave on Fridays at 4 p.m. to be home before sundown, and he was not available until after dark the next day. Although his contract allowed for religious observances, the clause proved very difficult for the studio and the production to work around. They had trouble shooting the show. They couldn't get the production schedule right because of his absence. As that season progressed, Briggs appeared less and less, and it's said that the actor had other problems as well. In the episode that was mentioned just a little bit ago, entitled Action, he really refused to climb into the rafters of a 20-foot soundstage. He was so adamant about not doing this that he went and locked himself in his dressing room. The production was not able to come to terms with him during this shoot, and the producers reshot that episode without him. That's when another team member, Cinnamon Carter, listened to the tape message at the beginning. Now, in theory, Briggs and Phelps are the only full-time members of the Mission Impossible Force. As the series was originally conceived, they would form teams composed of part-time agents from a variety of professions based on the particular skills required for the mission. But in practice, however, Briggs and Phelps choose the same core group of three or four agents for every mission. 
sometimes occasionally supplemented by guest stars playing agents that had unique skills. The regular agent lineup during the first season consisted of Cinnamon Carter, played by Barbara Bain. She's a top fashion model and actress. Roland Hand, played by Martin Landau. He's a noted actor, makeup artist, escape artist, magician, and man of a million faces. Barney Collier, played by Greg Morris. He's a mechanical and electronics genius. And lastly, Willie Armitage, played by Peter Lupus. He's a world record holding weightlifter. And most people don't realize that in the opening sequences, creator Bruce Geller is the one that strikes the match and sets things in motion in that opening credits montage. For several years, the series' first season was not shown in its syndication package. This was due to the fact that many people had grown so accustomed to Jim Phelps, played by Peter Graves, being the leader of the team, that many viewers were shocked when they saw that first season reruns with Dan Briggs, played by Stephen Hill, as the leader of the team. When the reel-to-reel tape recorder that you see giving instructions for the mission they need to accomplish, it was actually in rewind mode rather than in play mode. This was done because they tried it the other way around and the tape just moved too slowly for it to appear that it was being played. Only 120 missions include the famous warning that the tape will self-destruct. Five say that the tape will decompose. One says that it will destroy itself. Twelve instruct Briggs or Phelps to dispose of it. Seven tell them to destroy it. And three contain no instructions. Now you have to admit, the highlight of the show was the lovely Cinnamon Carter, played by Barbara Bain. She was fairly unknown when she got this role. And it's somewhat interesting what she had to do to get this main character role. The series was produced by Desilu Productions. And who is the head of Desilu? That would be the famed Lucille Ball, who at that time was probably the most powerful lady in Hollywood. Barbara Bain's agent told her that in order to get this role, she needed to send a copy of her past comedic work that she had done over so Lucille Ball could view it. Barbara Bain came unglued, and she told him, I'm not going to send that at all. You're telling me to send my comedic work to the very best comedian lady in the business? I could never compete with that, and I don't want to do that. Eventually, what they made her do was go sit down face-to-face with Lucille Ball. Lucille Ball looked at her, made a little small talk with her, and said, you're perfect for the role. You're hired. This powerful Hollywood icon was pretty impressed with Barbara Bain. Go back and watch an episode of this great show. I watched one just the other day, and I had forgotten how good it is. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.